Welcome, this is MCG Tech with the second iteration of an onboard graphics card water cooler. If you haven't seen my first attempt featuring a 3D printed enclosure, I would recommend you watch it before this video. In that video, I ran into performance issues because of the oven like effect created by the 3D printed shroud. Additionally, the singular 80mm radiator wasn't sufficient to dissipate the heat of the graphics card. Using what I learned from that attempt, I decided to double the amount of radiators and use an open air design. I am aware of the ASUS ROG matrix, but it hadn't been released when I thought about building the first version, and I still want to successfully bring my original idea to life. First, let's take a look at the card I decided to water cool. The PNY GTX 770 cooler features several copper heat pipes, which draw heat away from the GPU die and other graphics card components. The heat is then drawn away by aluminum fins that surround the heat pipes. Finally, the triple fan shroud dissipates the heat into the air around it. I use this cooler to serve as a reference point. For my testing, I use the Fermark benchmark and stress test at 10 minute and 20 minute intervals. Starting with the benchmark, this card scored 2908 points, peaking at a maximum of 76 degrees Celsius. As for FPS, the card had a minimum of 43, average of 48, and maximum of 51. Transitioning to the stress test, the card maxed out at 81 degrees Celsius with a minimum of 45 degrees at 10 minutes into the test. After an additional 10 minutes, the temperatures remained the same, but the minimum FPS dropped from 45 to 43 FPS. Without further ado, let's get into the custom cooler construction. I used the same outer casing, although I did have to use a rasp to widen the clearing to the GPU die. I then 3D printed a mounting bracket so I could attach a CPU AIO without its original radiator directly to the GPU die. Unlike my first cooler design, I decided to use two 80mm radiators, which I attached to the card using a combination of superglue and VEX bars. To top it all off, I used two slim fans to dissipate the heat away from the radiators. The most difficult part of the build was filling the loop with water because of the difficulty involved with sealing a loop underwater. Now that the build is complete, we can get into the benchmark. The card gained a negligible amount of performance with a score of 2,909. However, the thermal performance improved a staggering 23 degrees Celsius with a max of 53 degrees. This card also had a lower minimum FPS of 26, but a higher average FPS of 49 and an equal maximum of 51 FPS. A similar trend can be seen in the stress test with a higher average and maximum FPS but lower minimums. At 10 minutes into the stress test, the cooler yielded a minimum of 41 FPS, an average of 50 FPS, and a maximum of 53 FPS. As for temperature, the cooler produced a lower minimum of 28 degrees Celsius, but a higher maximum of 86 degrees. After an additional 10 minutes, the results remained the same. Considering the higher average FPS while stress testing and significant drop in thermals during the benchmark, I would call this project a success. I believe the ideal use case for a cooler like this one would be shorter workloads, such as the Fermark benchmark prior to the loop being fully heated up. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Also feel free to check out the rest of the content on this channel. Thank you for watching.